Crispin here again and I'm out in the workshop and today's video is about the making of these parts or six of them. These are split bearings so they're a bearing for an axle to run in. The axle runs in this hole here and so that the bearing can be closed over the axle this part here can be removed so this drops out. Typically people would um, build these out of two bits of cast iron, one for the top half, a bit of cast iron for the bottom and that would be that. Um, but cast iron's reasonably expensive to buy so I thought I'd try and make it out of odds and ends I had lying around. All the weight on this is from above so only this top half actually contacts the bearing. So the way I've made mine is to fabricate them from various bits. So the, the outer shell, or what I'm going to call the main body, and the actual underkeep are going to be made of steel. And the, the bit that has to do all the bearing work is going to be made of bronze. Now this does make it a bit more complicated because you've got to factor in an extra piece um, and I've enjoyed the challenge of making them like this but whether I'd do this again or whether I'd just buy the cast iron I don't know but uh, I'll show you the manufacture of them and you'll see how all the bits lock together and uh, then I'll show you the finished ones at the end so uh, we start over at the lathe where I'm machining these what I'm going to call half shell bearings I'm here at the Myford lathe and I'm just about to turn the half shell uh, bits of bronze for the bearings. Uh, to save on material and machining time I started with a full round then I chopped it in two and machined each side so they were the same thickness and then soft soldered them together. I've now uh, turned all three of these together so there's a one, two and three um, pairs of what will be half bearings so now I can cut uh, down these two lines here and uh, then warm them up and they'll be separated into six parts then I've now finished the initial machining of these main bodies and as you can see it's like a uh, a U shape with what I'd call a, a H profile so I've got six of those six of these um, bronze what will be half shells and um, they fit together like this The next step with this is to machine a square or a rectangular piece to fit underneath that bronze slug. The whole assembly will be uh, held together by a, a pin running roughly through there, holding uh, it all together, but it'll uh, uh, become clearer. I'm just about to square the tops of these blocks off and I'll show you them when I'm done. These are the uh, blocks to fit underneath the bronze slugs and I uh, I happen to have some metal off cuts big enough to get two out of one strip so I've machined them in pairs. I am achieving the final fit between the uh, underkeep and the main body and I just have a little bit of filing to do.
little bit tight still but nearly there. I've got a satisfactory fit now and uh, time to put all three bits together. Here is one ready to be machined on all the uh, faces and board. I'm here at the Myford lathe and I am taking these components in uh, this state and facing and boring them. And there we have uh, all three components faced off and flush with each other. The next stage is to produce a hole down the middle that I can then get a boring bar into. I would have, or if this was just one block of steel, I would have uh, sent a drill and drilled up to a as close as size as I could get to the finished diameter but as I have two dissimilar metals here bronze and steel I'm worried that the drill or cutting tool will move sympathetically with the steel and cut more out of the bronze so to try and reduce the effects I'm going to start the hole with a, um, a series of slot drills and hopefully they will stay on track better than a twist drill would. This is a 5 8 slot drill and uh, the finish size is 3 quarters. I've now got this fixture in the chuck and uh, turned to a diameter which fits this nicely so I know there should be very little run out when uh, I mount this. So I can push it on and lock it up with an allen key. And now I can machine the face. Just as a follow up to the previous clip I thought I would explain the fixture you saw me using to uh, face the other side of this. It is in a, a sense an expanding mandrill type of fixture and uh, I don't know if you can see but there's a flush piece of brass there and the same on the opposite side and what happens is when this uh, bolt is tightened up that cone is uh, wedged into the bottom of those uh, plugs which are tapered on the bottom and I'll demonstrate with an allen key and hopefully you'll be able to see them protruding outwards as I wind the cone in the brass plugs project. Now obviously the diameter is turned very close so they'll only project a minute amount just to grip and hopefully won't actually offset the diameter at all. My next job is to take the unfinished uh, box and clean up all the uh, outside edges. To do this I've uh, mounted that fixture you saw me using earlier into uh, the dividing head on the uh, milling machine. I'm set up in the dividing head now and I've taken care to align the fixture both in terms of run out and uh, in terms of being parallel to the bed so I know that the faces I'm going to machine now should all be nice and uh, geometrically accurate to the bore. Start by taking one cut down the middle, then rotate 180 degrees, and at the same settings take another cut down the middle. This first cut is 50 thousandths in depth.
this uh, surface is now brought down to the right place and out here at the Boxford CNC mill producing the final feature which is uh, an oil well in the bottom of these under keeps um, so time for final assembly when these are done these are now finished or as finished as they're going to be for a while in the end I'll run in a slot and when I finish the slot I'll need to do a few fitting jobs such as put a bit of a curve on these lips to allow some movement but as far as these go for now I'm, I'm pretty pleased with them and they've come out nicely that's the main body and the uh, bronze bearing you can see and underneath slides the underkeep this uh, you can see there's a, a cut out in the bottom there that's a um, an oil reservoir and a felt pad will go in there and oil that's fed up the ends of the axles will collect in there and keep everything well lubricated these slot in like that and a, uh, a pin goes through the side to hold it all together just a few close-ups now of the final component still could do with a few rough edges taking off but nothing out of the unusual this isn't the only one there are in fact six and I have those here There are all six of them ready to be put into use. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.